Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV. We're here at the International Workboat Show in New Orleans, and we're very pleased to be joined by Dale Gusick, Export Sales Manager for RW Fernstrom. And Dale, first and foremost, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Greg. Pleasure being here. Could you give a description of the company and your role? Sure. Uh, RW Fernstrom has been designing and manufacturing packaged keel cooler systems for over 70 years now for the marine industry. Uh, along with that, for the past 20 years, we've partnered with Wake of Box Schoolers BV out of Holland mm -hmm. in manufacturing the box schooler for the American market. Uh, that's worked so successfully for us that four years ago, the owners of Fernstrom actually purchased Wake of Box Schoolers BVs. Well, Dale, the installation of keel coolers, again, it's an, it's an interesting product because and I'm sure you run up against it on occasion. People know it, but they don't know it. Right. Um, and when you look at the installation of a packaged keel cooler, um, there is isolating the keel cooler and bonding the keel cooler. Um, can you explain the difference between the two, what's preferred, and some of the caveats with, with sure. both methods? Sure, I'd be glad to. One of the key components here, Greg, is that packaged copper nickel keel coolers are almost all manufactured with 90-10 copper nickel alloys. Mm -hmm. Two reasons for that. The copper nickel is obviously the longevity it has in seawater, brackish water, river water environments, is it's a leader for that. Mm -hmm. But then secondary, copper being a natural anti-foulant is also one of the preferred vehicles to be used underwater mm -hmm. in keel cooler manufacturing. Um, the thing is for the copper alloys to resist marine growth, mm -hmm. they have to be isolated from the hull. So our first step and suggestion is always to our customers to isolate that keel cooler from the hull. Mm -hmm. That allows the copper alloys to develop a copper oxide film on them, mm -hmm. which does the protection against the marine growth. When you say isolate, is it is it a standard package component when you deliver a keel cooler, or can you just give me a, get, dig a little more in the weeds as far as the actual isolation of the keel cooler? Sure. Well, there's two things we want to do. First of all, we would always encourage an owner or a shipyard when they're entering a project with a new vessel to contact a corrosion engineer, mm -hmm. get them involved. We want them to be completely in charge of the whole underwater apertures and you know all, all of the underwater equipment and be able to control that with their corrosion package. But yeah, isolation-wise, if you follow the directions that are installation manual mm -hmm. and you use the mounting gaskets and mm -hmm. things that we provide with the keel cooler, they should be isolated from the hull properly. Okay. So looking at uh, keel cooler installation and bonding. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about um, why some organization might choose to bond and I guess why it's not the preferred method from the outset? Right. Some of our customers do bond their coolers to the hull. Mm -hmm. For them, that's what's worked best in the past. They've developed a system, whether it's using passive anodes such as zinc or aluminum mm -hmm. or active systems like an ICCP system. But they've developed a product that, for their boats, has worked. So they can certainly do that. Uh, the problem with bonding the keel cooler, once it's bonded to the hull, mm -hmm. that copper nickel takes on the signature of the steel underwater, mm -hmm. and it cannot protect against the marine growth. So it will foul out quicker. Upon delivery, do the keel coolers come with some sort of zinc anode protection or other protection? Yeah, they do. Uh, all of our coolers that do ship come standard with zinc anodes mm -hmm. that are mounted directly to each end of the keel cooler. Now, those anodes are not designed for a specific period of time, let's say a two-year, three-year, or five-year life cycle. Mm -hmm. They're really just there to protect that keel cooler in the installation construction phase of that vessel. Uh, that's where we see a lot of damage that can occur from stray welding currents, mm -hmm. uh, things like that at the shipyard. So the zincs are really there for that construction phase of the vessel. Um, if you see the anodes disappearing rapidly, and rapidly is one of those terms that can mean different things, yeah. but I would say if you see within a year where the anodes have completely disappeared, mm -hmm. that's really a red flag to the owner and the operator, mm -hmm. that there's a stray current problem down there somewhere and they probably need to do some research. They need to check inside their vessel to make sure things are bonded, grounded properly within the vessel. They need to look outside the vessel. We see a lot of damage coming into vessels now mm -hmm. from ship to shore power hookups, <laughs> from docks that are hot. In other mm -hmm. words, the pilings can actually be putting a current flow into the seawater, which then gets to the keel coolers or the vessel itself. But if we see those animals disappearing rapidly, that's mm -hmm. a red flag that they need to do some checking and we would suggest they replace those anodes at that time too. Mm -hmm.
can you discuss your relationship with the client, not just from the outset and the, in, in the initial sale, but through the life of the vessel? Yeah, we always encourage our customers. You know, if there's some type of a problem or a question, anything going on with the coolers or the vessel, contact us. Mm -hmm. um, we may not have the answers, but we will certainly help you try and source and find mm -hmm. that answer. Um, our years of experience do allow us to answer a lot of questions mm -hmm. and help people at that stage, but we do have other people that we work with that we can bring in and help them, uh, you know, in their efforts to, to really control what's taking place. Great. Well, Dale, again, it's a busy show. You're a busy guy. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. All right. This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV.